How's it going everybody? Brad Kelly here, creator of The Slant Route and this YouTube channel, Brad Kelly. You can subscribe using the button in the upper right hand corner. Today we're going to go through a 2021 first round NFL mock draft, actually the second mock draft I've done. You can see it written up at on the slantroute.substack.com or continue watching here for a little bit more um, explanations for each pick. Uh, so every single pick in this mock draft will be different uh, than the previous one, except for the number one overall pick, because I think, and most of the people in the league think that that pick is sort of set in stone. But if you go back to look at the previous one and this one, you'll see your favorite team uh, have a select a different prospect. And I think that that type of variation while still being realistic uh, is good for, for mock drafts and, and seeing all the different types of scenarios that certain teams and uh, could look at and, and the way a snowball effect can kind of happen uh, near the top of the draft. So number one is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson. I think everybody knows a lot about Trevor Lawrence by now. He's definitely a high caliber prospect, one of the best quarterback prospects that I've ever evaluated. Pretty much checks every box and is close to a sure thing uh, as there is in the NFL draft and especially at that position. Number two, the New York Jets. I had them taking Zach Wilson, quarterback from BYU. The previous one, I had them taking Justin Fields. This one, they take Zach Wilson, a player who, uh, with Justin Fields, is kind of in that next, you know, second tier of quarterbacks uh, uh, behind Trevor Lawrence. A lot of people around the league prefer Zach Wilson. Pretty good athlete, has a big arm, has a really quick and tight release. His release is kind of similar to Aaron Rodgers. It's just the way he gets the ball out of his hands. Uh, the way he can really jump out of his hands, can make every throw on the football field, and you add in the mobility and the off-platform throws. His peak plays are a little bit better, in my opinion, than, than what is on Justin Fields' uh, tape, but his consistency isn't quite what Fields is. So that's kind of the give and take between those two as prospects. I think the Jets will be looking either at Wilson or at Fields for their pick at number two. Number three, I have the Miami Dolphins taking Jamar Chase, wide receiver from LSU, 2019 Bolitnikoff Award winner. So the Dolphins are likely going to be in the market for a wide receiver if they move forward with Tua Tagovailoa as their starting quarterback. Some people might prefer Devontae Smith from Alabama who played with Tua in college. Jamar Chase, in my opinion, is, is the superior prospect among the two. He has better size. He has better strength. He's going to be a better all-around athlete. He was more productive at a younger age. And he's younger currently uh, than Devontae Smith. I think all of that matters when it comes to wide receiver evaluation. Either one, I think, would be a great fit for the Dolphins. In this scenario, Chase becomes their next number one wide receiver. Number four for the Atlanta Falcons, I have them taking Justin Fields, quarterback from Ohio State, previously mentioned that he could be an option at number two. High caliber quarterback prospect, in my opinion, wherever he goes in the draft, that's the best pick of the draft because he is a, a player who, uh, a quarterback prospect who typically would be the number one pick. He's that level of player. Just so happy he's in the same class as Trevor Lawrence, who is probably the best quarterback prospect in the last 10 years. Fields is very high caliber. Like I said, I think he could be the quarterback of the future. Maybe he sits for a year behind Matt Ryan, uh, allows him to develop, allows him to age because he is coming into the NFL with only about half of the amount of dropbacks that Trevor Lawrence has. So a little bit of time, some, some seasoning, some time to develop behind Matt Ryan before eventually taking over. They're having a new regime uh, and, and their coaching staff and Arthur Smith could be looking for a quarterback for him to grow with and for to put into his system uh, for the long term. Number five, the Cincinnati Bengals have them taking Penny Sewell, offensive tackle from Oregon, opted out of this past season. Last time, uh, last draft, I had them taking Rashawn Slater because Penny Sewell was already off the board. But I think offensive line is going to be uh, the best the best idea for the Bengals because they did take Joe Burrow, number one overall last year. They need to now better protect him moving forward in the future. He was actually injured, and, and part of that had to do with the fact that their offensive line uh, struggled a bit last season. So secure off the offensive line, sure up, sure that up to make sure to make sure Joe Burrow stays upright moving forward. Number six, the Philadelphia Eagles have been taking Devontae Smith, wide receiver from Alabama, previously mentioned. The Eagles need help at wide receiver, in my opinion. I think Devontae Smith is a is a player who can play the, on the boundary, but also the slot can stretch the field from the slot and kind of fill the Jalen Rager. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, what they kind of thought they were getting between the combination of those, but his route running, 
Um, you know, the way he's able to run after the catch and explode after the catch, he's just a well-rounded player. Despite him being a little bit undersized, I think he's going to be a very good NFL wide receiver. Reminds me a lot of Keenan McCardell for those who remember uh, McCardell as a receiver for the Jags. Number seven, the Detroit Lions have them taking Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. The Lions, uh, Matthew Stafford has requested a trade from the Detroit Lions, which definitely puts them in the market for a quarterback. I think Lance is safely in that number four spot uh, in the NFL's eyes uh, at that position among this NFL draft class. But I think the Lions, knowing that they have to secure a quarterback of the future, are going to target that position at number seven. In this scenario, Trey Lance is the one that's available. Number eight, the Carolina Panthers. I have them taking Rashawn Slater. Now, if they miss out on the quarterbacks, because that could definitely be a, a route that they are uh, prefer to take in the NFL draft, I think the next best, best thing for them will be to look at the offensive line uh, and, and, and try to keep Teddy Bridgewater upright if he's a starting quarterback next season, which was something they were not able to do uh, last year. And whoever they're able to secure maybe uh, – Beyond that, you know, next year's draft maybe uh, to be that next quarterback or on free agency or through trade, they have at least pieces on the offensive line to make sure that they can function at a high level or function properly. Rashawn Slater opted out of this past season, but if you go back to watch his game against Chase Young, I think he had the best game against Chase Young out of any offensive tackle uh, in the Big Ten. Number nine, the Denver Broncos had them taking Patrick Sertan Jr. corner uh, from Alabama, professional type of corner. Uh, I think the, the Broncos could use some help in the secondary, pretty much all on defense. Um, they're all three levels of their defense. Uh, there, there's a lot of talent in Denver, I think, on the defensive side, but I think if they continue uh, to add pieces to that secondary to put next to a Justin Simmons at safety, that they can really, really become kind of a, that dominant defense that they had a few years ago when it was Akeem Tlaib and Chris Harris and all those guys. Uh, so Denver, another team that maybe they're in the quarterback market, but I think... I still think moving forward that they're going to uh, roll with Drew Locke for at least another season, uh, pick up position players to better their roster around that quarterback. Number 10, the Dallas Cowboys, Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech, another corner, opted out of this past season, but it's really, really great traits, I think, for the position. I think Sertan is a little bit more surgical, a little bit better footwork, more consistent play to play, but you see Farley's high high end elite traits uh, for for a cornerback and I think teams are just going to salivate over that. Hopefully, you know, this past season, he's been really kind of hammering out those details, uh, you know, bettering his footwork and, and, and becoming more consistent play to play as he's kind of had time to take a step back from the game and work, uh, work out, uh, you know, on his own. I think for the Cowboys, they definitely need a number one corner uh, on this roster. They're going to be in that market, whether it's through trade, free agency, or the NFL draft. They need to get better. They need to draft a bunch of defensive backs, in my opinion. That was really the, one of the weak points of their team in general. Number 11, the New York Giants have them taking Jalen Waddle, wide receiver from Alabama. The best speed threat in the NFL draft, a three-level type of route runner. Great stop, start, stop, great deceleration. You can run pretty much every route. Can also win while he's contested and above the rim. A complete wide receiver prospect who happens to just be about 5'11 and 183 pounds. Reminds me a lot of T.Y. Hilton. Great after the catch. I think he's going to be a star in the NFL. Now, the Giants have some talent at wide receiver, but they're going to continue to try to surround quarterback Daniel Jones with as many weapons as possible. I think, one, to justify that draft pick that they used on Daniel Jones a few years ago, and two, to make him more comfortable because when he plays well, the Giants can be a very good team in the NFL. They proved that down the second half of this past season, but they need Jones to play well on a consistent basis and getting him better weapons uh, and young weapons and exciting ones like that to pair with a Darius Slade, another deep threat, really stressed defenses down the field, I think could be huge for Jones and their intermediate and short passing game. Number 12, the San Francisco 49ers. I've been taking J.C. Horn, uh, cornerback from South Carolina. Richard Sherman's definitely aging. Jason Verrett, maybe he's not around for the long term. I think they could look at another corner. J.C. Horn has great press man uh, type of ability. Pesky, good ball skills. He opted out after, I believe, four games of this past season. Another mid-first round type of corner. Maybe he's even number two in the class at the position. I think the Niners, they're in a, in a situation with their quarterback where they don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo is a long-term answer. Maybe they try to, you know, add pieces offensively to see exactly what they're going to get. Can he stay healthy, you know? It, but their defense took a step back. They're losing Robert Sala, the defensive coordinator. He's now the head coach of the New York Jets. So they're in a situation, in, in, a, in a weird situation as far as the roster building goes. I think a best player available approach could help them. But also cornerback, a little bit of a need. Maybe that helps uh, in the selection as well. 
14, the Minnesota Vikings. I've been taking Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. I think on film, best linebacker prospect that the NFL has seen since Luke Kuechly. Can play that stand-up role. Was the number one graded uh, run defender in the country as a true sophomore at Penn State in 2019 before he opted out of this past season. Can also rush the passer. Has great traits for an edge. Was actually a hand-in-the-dirt defensive end coming out of high school. So he's still actually kind of new to the linebacker position, but unbelievable athletic traits. Can even open up, get into coverage. I think he's that Kyle Van Noy, Jamie Collins type of role if he was you know, drafted the Patriots or Brian Flores defense in Miami. He's going to do it at such a high level. There are some character and off the field concerns, and that's why he drops in this scenario. 214, put him in the middle of the Vikings defense in that front seven. You know Mike Zimmer loves his defense, and I think he could be a, a wrecking crew in the middle of the Vikings defense. 15, the New England Patriots. Kyle Pitts, tight end from Florida. Dream scenario for the Patriots. Who knows if it's able to work out that way. Obviously, it would be a great, a huge upgrade for the Patriots over, you know, incumbent players, Devin Asiasi, Matt Lacoste coming back from uh, opting out and, and Ryan Izzo at tight end. It's a big upgrade over there. He'd be their best receiving target the, the day he steps into the building. High upside player, could be a top 10 pick in this scenario. Sometimes tight ends fall a little bit because, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a weird position to draft. A lot of guys drafted in the top 12 picks at the, at the position don't pan out and give top 12 type of production. Eric Ebron, TJ Hawkinson's kind of in the border. So I think the mid-first round makes sense for a player like Kyle Pitts and the Patriots get it, get kind of their dream pick. Pick 16, the Arizona Cardinals have been take, taking Christian Darisol, offensive tackle from Virginia Tech. Great zone blocking uh, tackle. And I think with the Cardinals running a pretty good amount of inside zone, a little bit of outside, uh, could and, and even some, some under center outside zone too. Uh, that he would be a great fit in that offense. It's a perfect fit. And, and with Kyler Murray, uh, Kyler Murray uh, at quarterback, and he got banged up here or there in last season. You want to keep him healthy. You want to keep him, uh, you know, functioning at a high level. All, investing in the offensive line is a way to do that. And I think Darisaw is the best fit as far as skill set goes to fit into the Cliff Kingsbury offensive system. Pick 17 is the Las Vegas Raiders. I've been taking defensive end for Michigan, Pay, Just a freak athlete at the position. Uh, a really sound defender against the run, but also has the traits to get after the passer, can turn a corner very tightly. I mean, you've seen probably by now the three cone drill that he did uh, last off season. It's going to be one of the best ever among defensive ends at uh, when it comes to the combine times. Just a great athlete position, but also technically sound. And I think that's something that has developed in his time at Michigan. I got to coach against him when he was in high school and he was just a freak athlete. But over the past four years, he's developed that a very sound game against the run can set the edge. And the, and the Raiders need more help uh, in their pass rush. They need to get after the quarterback better. He seems, Quiddy Pace seems like a, a dream uh, for John Gruden, Mike Mayock of the Las Vegas Raiders. Number 18, the Miami Dolphins. I'm taking Najee Harris, running back from Alabama. I think Miami needs a future running back. I would not take a running back in the first round, but I think if there is one that I, it would be worth it in this class, it's Najee Harris, partly because he's a great power back, but also he has great traits again in the receiving game, which is not a combination you generally see, but he's really developed in that receiving game over his time at Alabama. Um, I think the, Dol the Dolphins just coached him at the Senior Bowl, and you're also surrounding Tua Tagovailoa with one of his teammates from college and a player who can, can be a check down guy and another weapon for him in the passing game. I think that, that makes a lot of sense as for, for Najee Harris as far as the fit goes. Uh, you know, the senior bowl connection, the Tua Tagovailoa connection, the fact that the Dolphins, uh, they have a need uh, at, for, for a feature running back. Number 19, the Washington football team. I've been taking Kadarius Toney, wide receiver from Florida. Just had a solid week at the Senior Bowl. Struggled with some drops here or there, but just moves in a different way than every other receiver pretty much I've ever seen. 5'11", uh, uh, weighed in, I believe, at 193 pounds. Just a, a shifty, elusive, human joystick type of slot receiver. Can be used at... Uh, in the receiving game, in the running game, jet sweep, horizontal stretches. He's had great success as a punt returner and a kick returner. He was a high school quarterback. They used him as the Wildcat quarterback. They used him as running back. Just an offensive weapon, and I think that's something that the football team is missing currently. They have Terry McLaurin at wide receiver, but beyond him, I think they need a complimentary piece, and Tony fits, uh, I think, perfectly uh, for what the football team needs. Number 20 is Chicago Bears. I'm taking Elijah Vera Tucker, offensive tackle, uh, from USC. When it comes to the Bears, they're another team that's kind of up in there what they're going to do with the quarterback, right? They don't know if they're going to continue to move out Mitch Trubisky. Some people in the building apparently want him to be the guy moving forward. Some people don't because, uh, you know, despite him having a, a strong stretch to end the season, there's been a lot of inconsistencies 
in his game. But they're bringing back their GM. They're bringing back their head coach. That tells me that maybe they are going to roll with Mitch Trubisky. And the best way to get the most out of him, once again, would be to bring back Allen Robinson, obviously. But beyond that, you got to continue to strengthen uh, the offensive line. I think Vera Tucker could play either side of uh, of the ball, uh, right or left tackle. And I think he's a strong developmental tackle. I think his traits kind of outweigh where he is as a player right now. And that usually gets guys drafted. He's a great athlete for the position as well. Pick 21, the Indianapolis Colts. I've been taking Jalen Mayfield, offensive tackle from Michigan. I think he's a pure left tackle type of prospect. Anthony Costanzo just announced his retirement. Colts, once again, another team. What are they going to do at quarterback? Are they going to be in the trade market, the free agency market? Could they take one in the draft? But with a hole that left tackles, it might not even matter who they put back there. They got to sure that up. They got to make sure that whoever is behind center has protection to his blind side. And I think Mayfield is going to be a strong pass protecting prospect. And I think the, the position, if it's not a quarterback uh, at this pick, the position of left tackle becomes their number one need for the Indianapolis Colts. Number 22, the Tennessee Titans. I'm taking Joseph Asai, edge from Texas. Uh, the Titans struggled with the pass rush this past year. Even Harold Landry's production slipped a little bit as far as how many sacks he got. And they need to find someone to go with him to be on the other side. And Joseph Asai is an ascending prospect. Uh, this past season was obviously his best in college. Really got after the quarterback very well. Can play as an outside linebacker position, but also on the line of scrimmage. Kind of a versatile, great athlete. Um, and I think the Titans desperately need to hit some, uh, get some pass rush uh, infusion into their defense. They've kicked the tires on some veterans in past years. It haven't, hasn't quite worked out. It's time to get some youth at the position to pair with Harold Landry. Number 23, the New York Jets. I'm taking Travis Etienne, running back from Clemson. Uh, another running back that, you know, I might not take in the first, I might not take a run back in the first round, but he would be one that I would consider. Uh, and when it comes to the Jets, number two in this draft, I'm taking Zach Wilson. So putting a, another player with him, uh, another uh, backfield member with him who, is, who can be effective in the, in the passing game, uh, who has a ton of uh, pass protection reps as well. And this is really explosive with the ball in his hands, whether you hand it to him or it gets it uh, as a reception. So just a home run hitter at the position. That, and, and, and once again, similar to the Miami Dolphins, it's a position of need for the Jets. They don't really have that future guy. I mean, they gave Frank Gore a bunch of carries this past season. Uh, and, and didn't get a lot of great production from it. They need to improve their running game. Getting some talent at running back will help. And will help Zach Wilson as well uh, if he's a pick at number two. Number 24, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I've been taking Mac Jones, quarterback from Alabama. Had an unbelievable week at the Senior Bowl. I think he proved in Mobile the fact that, you know, there were questions at, because he's an Alabama quarterback and he's surrounded with a bunch of top talents on the offensive line and wide receiver and running back. You know, can he can he can he function when his talent around him is only as good as the defense? And he proved that he did. I mean, he he showed that the that it doesn't matter matter if it's Devonte Smith he's throwing to. The corner can be just as good as the receiver. He's going to fit that ball in the tight window anyway. And I think because of that, he has solidified himself as a first round pick for the Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger was ineffective uh, near the end of the season and in the playoffs overall. Uh, I think his arm is just not quite what it used to be. They need to look at a quarterback of the future. And Mac Jones could be that guy. And, and he could function, I think, very, very well in the Pittsburgh Steelers short passing game. That has kind of replaced their running game, uh, you know, as their, as their, in, as their base, off, the base of their offense. Uh, so I think Mac Jones solidified himself as a first-round pick with his performance at the Senior Bowl. Uh, and I think the Steelers' uh, scheme makes a lot of sense uh, for him to fit into. Number 25, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I've been taking Christian Barmore. Interior defensive lineman from Alabama, uh, a game wrecker. If you could put him in one gap and let him just go after the quarterback and penetrate uh, into the backfield, make plays against the run, Christian Barmore could do that. And I think he do that do that at a high level. Now he's not going to be a uh, two gap, you know, huge big body, you know, get his hands up and read either a gap type of Vince Wilfork like prospect, but he is the Aaron Donald type, where maybe not at that level, obviously, but. Penetrate that one gap, get out of the defense, make plays in the backfield, TFL, sacks, interior pressure, move the quarterback type of player. And down the stretch of the season in, in the SEC championship game and the two playoff games for Alabama, he was on a completely different level, an ascending prospect. This was his first year starting full time, and he just really took off. Christian Bourne was an impressive player. Could be a mid-round draft pick in this scenario for the Jags. Getting him at 25 is a great value. Number 26 for the Cleveland Browns. I've been taking Jeremiah Owusu. 
Coromoa, linebacker slash strong safety type of prospect, similar to an Isaiah Simmons type as far as his skill set goes. Uh, from Notre Dame, an explosive, hard hitter, can really lay the wood, can has a bunch of range uh, from that second level. And for the Cleveland Browns, I think that's the weakness of their roster. Uh, to be honest, they need better production from that position if they're going to improve as a team. And Jock, as he's commonly known as, could kind of sure up uh, that second level of the Browns defense. Number 27, the Baltimore Ravens, have them taking Rashad Bateman, wide receiver from Minnesota. Their, their wide receivers, they I mean, they need to improve realistically that Marquise Brown but beyond him it's a lot of question marks at the position they need better passing production from Lamar Jackson in order to win in the playoffs and continue to win the playoffs you know beyond the divisional round Marquise Brown like I said speedster Rashad Bateman I think he's a three-level route runner he has good size at 6'2 210 like I think he fits skill set wise very uh alongside of of Hollywood Brown and, and can give the Ravens a one-two punch at receiver to really help Lamar Jackson and have him not rely so much on his tight ends and running backs and check downs and the occasional shot to Hollywood Brown because Rashad Bateman's able to separate. Like I said, all three levels could get open and, and can kind of be a security blanket, but also a big play, double move type of player for the Ravens. Rashad Bateman would be a home run hit, I think, for Baltimore this late in the first round. Number 28, the New Orleans Saints have been taking Jalen Phillips, defensive end from Miami. Now, the Saints are in a weird situation because they're so over the cap. They're moving on from Drew Brees, most likely, at the quarterback position. They're going to have to do a lot of maneuvering uh, in free agency through trades to shed salary caps. So it's kind of odd. We don't really know what direction they're going to go, what their needs are going to be. I think their Super Bowl window came to a close when they lost uh, to Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Bucks. So what position are they going to go to? It's kind of hard to tell. Right now, I think the bet in this draft – the best player available is Jalen Phillips, the defensive end from Miami. I think he's very explosive. I think he can play the edge. Um, I think he can turn the corner. I think it's great active hands as a pass rusher as well. You know, he can learn from the veterans that the Saints have at the position and then eventually take over as a number one player, number one pass rusher for the Saints late in the first round, especially when they don't know what the direction they're going to go with their roster. Best player available makes a lot of sense for the New Orleans Saints. Number 29, the Green Bay Packers have been taking Alex Leatherwood off of the tackle from Alabama. There's some projection that he might move inside the guard uh, at the next level. He was up and down in Mobile as far as what I saw in the film. Uh, you know, here or there, he was he was strong. Some reps he lost. Uh, looked like he, he looked like he wasn't maybe at 100% health-wise as far as what I saw in film compared to what I saw during those practices. Uh, but I think a, a talented player, a first round caliber tackle who could be a very good offensive guard as well. I think for the Packers, you know, they're obviously, I think as far as all the reports are saying, they're going to move forward with Aaron Rodgers as their quarterback with Jordan Love still on the bench, but they need to continue to protect him. And that was an issue against the Bucs in the NFC Championship game was protecting their quarterback. The Bucs offensive line really got after it. I think T Leatherwood as a player has a lot of pass, rush, um, pass protection snaps uh, in his career. It makes a lot of sense for them. Number 30, the Buffalo Bills. I've been taking Trevon Boring, safety, TCU. Now, the safety combination of Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer for the Bills um, is, is a very strong one. Uh, and it's one of the best duos in the NFL. But if you saw their uh, AFC Championship game against the Kansas City Chiefs, I think you know that for them to close the gap on the Chiefs in the AFC, they need to continue to add talent and speed and youth to that defense and in particular to that secondary to be able to to hang with those wide outs in that passing game of the Kansas City Chiefs adding Trevon Moring who I think could fit as the number th like a third safety for them and eventually kind of take over it if Hyde or Poyer uh, move on or kind of you know get a little bit older as they're, they're both of them aren't you know still really young in the league they're, they're veteran players I think it makes a lot of sense and that's a type of player I, in my opinion that they need to continue to look at and continue to build their defense around in order to close that gap with the Kansas City Chiefs something Sean McDermott mentioned in their post game press conference number 31 the Tampa Bay Bucks. now this could be the Kansas City Chiefs the, the loser of the Super Bowl uh, is going to be drafting in this slide I'm taking Gregory Rousseau edge from Miami kind of Jalen Phillips running mate if you will he opted out of this past season I see him as a late first round early second round caliber prospect for the Tampa Bay Bucks. they got a ton of production from their pass rush against the Packers I just mentioned that uh, they need to I think they need to continue hitting on those uh 
that position because that is a weapon for them and for that it's a continue to be a weapon you know you need to get that that those those young talented pass rushers in the building jason pira paul is a veteran shaq barrett's a free agent probably likely to return in my opinion to tampa bay but adding more pass rush could never hurt i think their secondary it could also help their secondary which is uh you know touch and go at times maybe they could use a number one corner but in this situation in this draft i think those top guys have already been selected gregory russo makes a lot of sense and finally kansas city chiefs i have them picking 32 for the record because of the betting favorite for the super bowl so i have them picking the uh at 32 with the bucks at 31 i have the chiefs taking wyatt davis interior offensive lineman played guard uh for ohio state this is a mean mauler type but i think the the chiefs i think interior offensive line is, a, is an underrated need for them you know who knows what they get they get from uh, Laurent Tardif coming back from from opting out of this past season. I think in, you know if you invest half a billion dollars in your quarterback, the first thing you need to do is make sure that off your offensive line is stout. And I think Wyatt Davis, I think he has position flexibility at center and guard. Makes sense as a as a bruiser type in there. Get keep Patrick Mahomes upright for the next ten or fifteen years. Continue to invest in the offensive line and with interior offensive line being. A little bit of an uneasy position for them. I think Wyatt Davis makes a lot of sense. Let me know what you think about this entire mock draft in the comment section below. Let me know who, what your favorite pick was, who you want your favorite team to take. Uh, this scenario was presented to them. Thank you for watching. Once again, you can subscribe using the button in the upper right-hand corner. I'm Brad Kelly, and thank you for watching.